This is the National Urban League State of Black America Report 2007, a portrait of the African American male. From Washington, D.C., I'm Juan Williams. What is the state of black America in 2007 when it comes to the portrait of the black male, our boys, our men? We believe that uh, we are at a tipping point, a proverbial tipping point. And this tipping point defines two different worlds. One world is a world where black males have four times as many college degrees as we did in 1965, the year after the Civil Rights Act passed. This very same world is the world where we celebrate Tony Dungy, Lovey Smith, Tiger Woods, Chenault, Parsons, Clarence Otis, where we celebrate Tavis Smiley and Colin Powell and Spike Lee, and in the next room, we celebrate Charles Rangel and John Conyers. It's a world where black boys who grow up in two-parent households are in families whose median income is close to that of white Americans. But there is another world on the opposite side of this tipping point. It's a world where 5.6 million black boys grow up in fatherless families. It's a world where 40% of them are in deep, extreme poverty. It's a world where 50% in some urban communities do not even finish high school in the year 2000. And seven. That other world is a world where seven times as many black men as white men find themselves in the prison system. And where black men get longer sentences than white men for the exact same offense. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a tipping point. This year, the National Urban League and its affiliates want to focus this nation's attention on the frontline work we are doing, the frontline work that our affiliates are doing all across the nation as a solution engine, as an engine of change and an engine of changing lives. For the last four years, our Black Male Commission and Initiative has taken us from Morehouse College with some of the great successes amongst black males in this nation, all the way to the Shelby County Correctional Facility as we toured the country in direct conversations with both sides of this tipping point, with both sides of this tale of two very different communities. And in that process, We've learned that the National Urban League in its workforce efforts, in its after school efforts, in its early childhood efforts, that our affiliates that work in those areas are saving the lives of young black boys and black teens every single day. My affiliates, you are indeed on the front line. And this year, the fact that the Urban League and its affiliates are on the front line, we think allows us to have a conversation. Therefore, today, we offer some very important recommendations to this nation, which arise from the Urban League's 97-year history in empowering communities and changing lives all across the nation. We realize at the National Urban League that public policy measures are part of the solution. But we also realize that parents are part of the solution. Families are part of the solution. 
community is part of the solution. We've got to re-engage and inspire our parents to make a difference in the lives of young people, to set a high expectation that our young people will attend high school and finish. They will go to college and they will finish. To set a value when children are very young, instill it and drill it. Aggravate them if you have to. Turn off the TV and open up the book. We need our parents to be a part of this conversation, and we should not leave the idea that no amount of public policy measures and gestures will work without a partnership with those who have the responsibility of lifting and raising our children. So the National Urban League embraces comprehensive and cohesive solutions. We embrace the idea that there are some very important things that have to be done in the public policy arena, but that our community, our families, our people across the nation have to be united in helping to solve this problem. We must recognize our African-American men not as statistics and numbers in a report. We must recognize them as husbands and fathers, as sons and as role models. We must recognize them as a positive force in the future of this great American nation. It's fashionable in some places to demonize African American men. It's fashionable to take a few who may have strayed and suggest that they represent the whole. Those of us who are entrusted with leadership in our local communities, in our national communities, cannot walk down that path. We have got to walk down the path that confronting this crisis and solving this problem is not only good for black America, not only good for the black male, but is an issue for all of America. It's an issue for all walks of life. It's an issue, indeed, that we have to confront. We must close the jobs gap. We must close the education gap. We must close the high school graduation gap. But I suggest to you that we've got to close, as Barack Obama says in his foreword, the empathy gap. We've got to close the gap of concern in this nation today. We are trying in this report to focus on solutions, but we've got to not only advance hard solutions, but I think we've got to touch people's hearts. We've got to touch people's souls. Uh, we've got to inspire the American spirit that no problem is too tough for us to tackle as a nation. Even as black America celebrates progress, higher rates of graduation from high school, from college, and higher incomes, there are remaining issues of concern about the progress of the African American male. Mark Morial, President and CEO of the National Urban League, thank you so much for joining Juan, us. Juan, thanks. Great to talk to you always. Now this State of Black America 2007 comes with a foreword by Senator Barack Obama of Illinois, a black man who is one of the leading contenders for the Democratic nomination. He speaks of an empathy gap in America when it comes to addressing issues of race. Let's talk about the focus on the African-American male. Mm -hmm. so you're looking for solutions. You're looking for a positive, progressive approach, and that's why you've come up with five solutions. Five, five solutions that you advertise in this State of Black America 2007. What's number one? Number one is early childhood education 